People remember. Yeah, you know, clearly. Or it's my dashing good looks. Uh, either that or the <laughs> other one. Now, I would imagine that on a, a movie like this, having a little bit of a you know documentary background mm. certainly helped. Yeah, because you know the idea of this movie is to make a, a really authentic feeling version of, of, of Rome, to go against the kind of Prince of Persia version of the classical world where everything is fantastical and magical and CGI. I, I wanted to use as little CGI as I, as I could in the film and make it feel very real. And obviously being from a documentary background, that's kind of my stock and trade. Yeah, I want, you had great sets. I want to mm. build that fort in my backyard. I mean, <laughs> how much of those are just movie walls we see and there's nothing behind them? Or I mean, how much detail went into these that, that fort is kind of completely based on real Roman forts, frontier forts. Um, and we made it all for real. It's all made out of earth and wow. wood, which is what they would have done. So we just, you know, instead of it being, of course, taking a few weeks and people digging it out by hand. We had caterpillar trucks, thank God. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's all it's all made as they would have made it and all the rooms are kind of exactly as they, they're all plaster and, the, and there's no glass in the windows. There's just the sort of metal <laughs> yeah. bars, which is what they had. So I kind of think if you do that and if you try and make the environment and the costumes as real as possible, it affects the way the actors are because they, they, they oh, actually are. You're in coming, that world. They're exactly. in that world, exactly. And they're wearing the costume yeah. and it makes you stand in a different way if you've got that, 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 <laughs> that armor on and everything. So. Um, I think that that makes it feel that makes it feel real, makes the actors feel real within the world. Yeah, I got some neighbors I need to keep at bay, so that's what I, why I brought that up. <laughs> now you had some great. I mean, uh, as a child, who didn't play with swords? And you had some great battle scenes, great one-on-one -on -one mm. fighting. Mm. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about how much detail goes into that, but also the fact that. Um, you had an amazing sound people on this film because yes. I kept noticing that how it, it yeah. was probably the best sounding film I've seen in a while. Yeah, they're brilliantly imaginative guys they're in the Pinewood Studios in England and they, they do a lot of the best best movies. I've worked with them before and they, they, they did Slumdog Millionaire recently and they did uh, 127 Hours and other movies you might have seen. Yeah. Um, they are incredibly imaginative and to me I think um, the sound is the kind of forgotten part of yeah. the movie going experience, yeah. you know. But I think that when you're sitting in a theater, it's 30 or 40% of it is the sound. Yeah. You know, when you test screen a movie to an audience and it's got no, none of the finished sound on it, it always just feels so dead yeah. and empty. And then you, you do yeah. that detail and you find, you know, just the right winds and just the right clank of the metal for the swords. Yeah. And suddenly the whole thing comes alive and, it, and, it, and it, it makes it feel like, you know, you watch a movie and without the sound and it just sits in its little box on the screen like that. And suddenly you add the sound and it feels like the world Encapsul you encapsulate yeah, you by actually the world. become it's part of the film. Like, exactly. And exactly. Now these fights, like literally, there's all these people fighting, and is that entire who has this vision of? Do, you, they're not just going out of freestyle. I mean, no. come on. I mean, I mean, how? Well, well, bits of it they are going freestyle. You really? Go, you do, do bits of it, and you just say to these guys, you know, okay, you fight with him, and then you kill him, and you go, blah, 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 and then they, a lot of these guys have done it a lot before. <laughs> yeah. And if you tell them the style of fighting you want to do, because you're trying to do make the Romans fight in a different way to the to the Celts to the to the barbarians. And you, you, uh, some of it, you are just saying, okay, let's go. You guys all, all fight, <laughs> and they just go yeah. at each other, and they love doing that, and you, and, and you shoot yeah. it, and that's how you get that kind of documentary feel. But other parts, obviously, are very storyboarded. Right. And you know, like when you have these big maneuvers with the Romans at the beginning, and they're going out in the Testudo formation, and like a sort of human tank, that is all storyboarded, and every shot is exactly, because otherwise it would take you, take you forever, and be very confusing, and that's, that's, that's seems to me the tension in, in, in modern day action and fight scenes is between clarity of wide shots where you see what's happening and you understand it and then being close up and wobbling the camera around. You know, there's a Bourne movie kind of style. Sometimes that can go too far and you're kind of yeah. like, oh, what the hell's going on? I don't yeah. know. So you've you got to find the right balance of visceral and being in there and stepping back and understanding. Yeah, I was eating it up. Congratulations. Cool. Thank you so right. much.